Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be here. It's great to have all of you here. Uh, I'm very excited to be here in Bangalore uh, when I heard this was happening and uh, Mr. Nilakani was here and Rajiv and Nathan, great to uh, speak with you guys as well. I mean, great presentation and the enthusiasm is absolutely palpable. Mr. Nilakani, uh, just to jump right into it, you said we've seen this movie before uh, with Aadhaar. I mean, uh, you know, from the time that it started to the time that it was finally adopted in 2016 when our mobile network uh, really launched and they used that to build, uh, build, build out the network and get customers. Where are we in the ONDC journey in the life cycle from the time that we've started uh, to, I mean, really sort of that 2016 moment? I think uh, with the early uh, pieces of the uh, digital public infrastructure, I think it took more time to get the market momentum because people were, of course, wondering what it was and skeptical about it and so on. So I think, uh, uh, you know, Aadhaar was launched in 20, 2009, and it's only the EKYC really took off only in 2016. Uh, UPI was launched in 2016, but took off maybe two, three years later, and so on. So it takes time between launching something and making it scale up. But I think that time is now getting compressed because I mean people are far more aware of the power and potential of such an approach, and now we have folks like Antler who. I think are really taking the lead in creating an ecosystem. Uh, you know, they talked about capital, community, content. I think it's a brilliant way of doing it. So the fact that they're going to be systematically uh, creating a, a set of cohorts who will work on this, I think this time around it will happen much faster. So I think I think I'm I'm very very uh, optimistic that in the next couple of years you'll see uh, a lot of really great companies coming out of this. Uh, Mr. Nilkin, do you think we need a, a big sort of marketing push? Answer is, of course, a great initiative in terms of what they're doing. Uh, and, I mean, for this to work, you need sellers and buyers both on the platform, both on the network. Uh, but do you think a, a big sort of edu education, educational kind of marketing push is required across the country? No, obviously that's required, but I think, you know, maybe uh, Koshi will talk about it later. They've actually done an amazing job of spreading the, the message and... Uh, uh, getting all kinds of actors onto it, seller apps, buyer apps, delivery apps. So I, I think it's, it's a good thing. But, you know, as I said, things sometimes take time. If you look at the fast tag is a good example. The fast tag was, uh, the, the, you know, the tag on which you pay the toll thing was, it was, we conceived it in 2010. And that's, you know, 13 years back. It took many years for it to roll out. And today we are finding that apart from the fact that it's used in, 1,365 toll booths. It's also used for parking charges. There are going to be now hundreds of uh, places, and startups are now using it for parking or you know, many other use cases. So sometimes these things take long, but I think in this case, it's far more systematic. The awareness is very high. ONDC has done a great job in spreading the message. Antler has done a great job in putting a package together for founders. So I think it's going to be much faster. What is your uh, broader, bigger? Uh, just one more, sir. I mean, I'm uh, getting. I, I mean, I had a discussion with them right before you came on. So, uh, Mr. <clears throat> what's the bigger vision? I mean, uh, you, when you were making the presentation, I was, uh, you know, the use case for power. I mean, uh, was was something which you highlighted. I never thought of it like that. What is the broader vision for this uh, for Beckon and uh, ONDC? No, I think if you look at ONDC and the Beckon protocol, fundamentally. How do you, you know, there was a famous uh, economist called Roland Coase who came up with the Coase's law as to why, why do firms exist. And firms exist because you can't have everything as a transaction between two people and therefore you create firms to reduce interaction costs or switching co or, or, you know, cost of transactions and so on. And therefore you ended up in the 20th century with large firms which consolidated whether it was big farms that create, had all the land or big organized retail and so on. But in today's world where digital capability is democratic, right? everybody has a phone in their pocket uh, and you have networks, you can actually create large firms, not necessarily by creating one physical firm, but by virtually unifying many small firms, which is what when you say micro to mega, that's what you mean. And I think India is naturally suited for that because 
even when you have organized retail and e-commerce, you're still going to have 80% of the things sold through small retailers. You're still going to have 100, you know, all the trucks will be owned, everyone will own two, three trucks, uh, and so on. Or, you know, when you come to distributor energy, you'll have you know, thousands of vehicles on the road, all of which have an energy source and an energy consumption device on the car, right? So, what you now need is the ability to use protocols, a common language for all of them to talk to each other. So you can take all these disparate micro actors, but bring them together into a virtual whole. And that's what this does. So I think it's suited for our situation. Because India doesn't have land to build a huge mall on the you know, outskirts where people drive. That's not going to happen here. Right? So there'll always be the small guy. He'll have a small shop, you can order from there, he'll have it delivered to your house. It's happening today. People are ordering on you know, WhatsApp and getting it delivered. But if you can create a better protocol for streamlining this, you'll have huge amounts of value. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Nitin and Rajiv, I mean, when did the light bulb go off for you guys that, well, ONTC was the, was the thing and, you know, uh, what you wanted to bet on? If, uh, Nitin. Oh, so, I, you know, we have a colleague, Sushmit, who I want to credit for some of the work we started doing here. Um, I think we started to think about this uh, late last year, actually. So it's been about 10 months, so to maybe almost a year. And initially, as I mentioned earlier, it was more of, uh, you know, intellectually, this is very interesting. And, uh, you know, we, we, as I mentioned earlier uh, in, in my presentation, one way to look at it is, you know, take venture risk on new ideas. A lot of them may fail. That's okay. That's our job. Uh, this one is particularly interesting for all the reasons that were discussed because as a protocol, uh, you know, Beckin is designed for dynamic uh, location discovery and matching of resources that are dynamic. So it's, it's not just, uh, you know, ONDC, of course, is the biggest, most visible part of it. But we think that um, as a protocol itself, the applications could be in so many other areas. So that gave us uh, a sense that this could be broader than just commerce. But within commerce, uh, one of the nice things here is, and of course the value chain of how a dollar or rupee, whatever you want to take, flows from a, seller, a buyer to a seller, it's not fully clear today. But the beauty of it is, you know, this is commerce. This is transaction. This is dhanda. So a lot of the criticisms that you sometimes see in other models uh, outside of, you know, commerce, people are, how will you monetize? How will you scale? I think those concerns will not exist here. If we, if we create a, a user experience that is working for both sides, there is tremendous value to be shared. And then it also occurred to us, which is important to clarify, this is not about being anti-Amazon or Flipkart. I think that was very important to, to realize. You know, this is not something we think is, uh, will kill the large incumbents. I think the, it's a new construct which could also create opportunities for both large companies and small companies. So the unbundling is what we, we felt quite excited by. And then the next thing was, which is what we discussed, you know, can we do our part to build talent density and get this started, be a small spark, and, and then can we do it in a structured way, which is what the, pro, pro, the package that Rajiv went through. Rajiv, you want to add to that? The only thing I want to add is, Prashant, don't be guilty of asking Nandan all the questions. It's, uh, we are also in our, it's in our selfish interest to just understand as to how he thinks. So for every one question you ask us, do ask him four Please. questions. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mirkini, I have the license. <laughs> so he, has, he has a license. We also spend time with him before this session. But I think the, you know, for us, that the way the whole, you know, infrastructure sitting, uh, you know, underneath, so the protocol layer sitting on top, and then the application layer coming, uh, sometimes some of these don't take off, right? And as we said, you know, if, even during the last conversation, for us, you know, we had fascination, uh, Mr. Nandan, for Web3 also. But of course, some of the people who got into that ecosystem were not the, you know, most ethical uh, people globally, right? And because of which, you see the ripple effect of something negative happening. Uh, when the wrong founders, quote unquote, get into uh, what actually has a really strong benefit of being decentralized. So we want to do our bit to be able to get the right set of people uh, to be working on something here. And the revolution always starts with someone who is a, you know, a, a luminary who is sort of raising up their hand and building the core underlying infrastructure as well as the protocol layer because that's not where usually venture risk happens uh, because, you know, there's a public-private partnership that's required. But it's the, really the business application layer and the talent layer which is where someone like us can add any kind of a, even a small value. And that's really what we are trying to do, right? Uh, and we do hope that it takes off because I think as Magnus mentioned, 
uh, making progress inevitable is at the end of the day the reason why Nitin and me are doing this. Uh, and if we can do that across the ecosystem, uh, I think that will be a phenomenal impact. I just want to add one thing which keeps coming up in our internal conversations, right? And maybe this is uh, also for the founders. Somebody asked us, uh, if you ask us what our assessment of the Indian ecosystem right now is, we will say that founder quality and pedigree is an impressive. The quality of ideas is still incremental in most cases. And this is not a criticism, it's just a reflection of, you know, we have, compared to 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, much more experienced, competent founders who've gone through cycles. But, but there are few disruptive, bold, massive new ideas. And that's what changes the world. And I, we, we certainly feel this is, in India at least, the most impressive idea. Of course, we can think about AI in, in a more general sense, and, and you know, that, that is also very interesting. Uh, but this is the biggest. And in fact, another interesting angle is, as generative AI develops, can there be some interesting changes to how a seller goes online in the entire workflow? And you know, what could happen if that comes together with ONDC? Mr. Milligan, uh, is it, you know, Nitin said, it's not against platforms. It's not against an Amazon or a Flipkart. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> the common person when they hear about ONTC and the way it's explained, etc., still says, well, you know, so obviously uh, Amazon and Flipkart aren't going to be happy. Or the other uh, sort of, you know, platforms, Swiggy or Zomato, whoever it may be. Uh, how does one, how do you explain that as, uh, as an idea? No, I think it's, it's about expanding the market. You know, it's about, you know, if you don't do these things, you'll have only 5-6% of the people in e-commerce. But if you want the whole country to be on e-commerce, you want everyone to be ordering something in his own language with a voice instruction from a local Kirana store. If you want to reduce costs, because this will also help in reducing intermediation costs, because transactions will just flow through the system, then you need to do this. So it's all about expanding. Because if you want to create a digital economy, you have to create a digital economy for everybody. It's not about some few guys buying smartphones and all that. It's about everybody participating. So that's what uh, this does. So I don't, I think it's going to expand the market for everyone. So everyone will benefit, but more and more people will come into the uh, digital e-commerce e world. Many transactions that are happening informally through, uh, you know, bilateral sort of transactions will now flow through this. And then a very important thing is that a byproduct of that will be the digital capital it will create. Right? So if I'm a small vendor, Small and I'm on eco, I'm on on ONDC and I sell. Then I have the details of what I have sold electronically because ONDC will the data is there. How much money I've received? Then I can take that data and monetize it to get a, a loan. So all this formalization of e-commerce of commerce in the country, enabled with digital, is going to happen. So I think uh, it's not about A versus B. It's really about dramatically expanding the market. One phrase which I've heard uh, repeated a couple of times, more than a few times uh, here this evening today, has been building and population scale, for population scale. What exactly, how should one think about that? I mean, uh, I think you've used that uh, as well. Well, when you say population scale is how do you build uh, digital infrastructure for 1.4 billion people? That's what population scale means. Now, how do you do that, right? You have to do things... Uh, so that you have the distribution infrastructure to reach everybody. Now, if you take Aadhaar, we had 35,000 enrollment stations. We did 5 million, 50 enrollments per day. So across the ecosystem of enrollment stations, we had 1.5 million enrollments a day, the largest thing, which is why we could get to a billion people in seven years. So that's about population scale. Similarly, anything about UPI, how do you get to, uh, you know, today we have 350 million people who are paying with UPI, but tomorrow with uh, na you know, natural Indian language capability, with voice recognition, with feature phone, with UPI light, suddenly you will go to four, 500 million people using it. So everything, and, 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 and I think also credit to the mobile industry. I think our mobile industry has always shown that if you really produce a very cheap network, whether it's voice initially or now for data, 700 million people are going to use it uh, to see. So you can, 
population scale simply means something that the entire population can get access to. So architecturally, it has to be at scale. It has to be very low cost. It has to be very low transaction uh, amounts because people can't afford big amounts. It has to be sachet size. And it has to be done interoperably so everybody can participate. Do we, uh, will it happen in small increments, this takeoff, or will we have a 2016 type moment which you described earlier here, in your opinion? No, I think uh, we are already seeing, um, again, I, I don't want to steal uh, Koshi's uh, thunder, but uh, they already have thousands of transactions happening on ONDC. And Namayatri, which has been a sleeper success, is doing, you know, 80,000 transactions a day. That's non-trivial. I mean, 80,000 transactions in Bangalore is as big as anybody else. And they've done it without spending, you know, millions on marketing. It's just by word of mouth. The auto rickshaw driver has become the biggest salesman because he's getting the full benefit. So, you know, so new marketing, new market models are emerging. So I think many of the ideas here will have that kind of virality of growth because they're fundamentally so much more uh, powerful than what exists. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that it will happen fairly fast. Uh, Rajiv, uh, discounts, right? I mean, that was one thing which uh, got a lot of attention, I think, about a year ago, maybe less than that, uh, with uh, ONTC. Zamat. I mean, there was a fair bit of discussion around it, whether this is only going to be vi viable if uh, there are discounts, etc. involved. That's not the case anymore. But uh, just incentivizing both buyers and sellers on the network, uh, what, what are the ways and how do you guys think about it? I have a very founder view to it. Uh, in Urban Ladder, when we started Urban Ladder, uh, 11 years back, we said absolutely no discounts, right? And the brand was built on getting the right customer into the platform and buying the furniture, right? Uh, and even, you know, of course, today, Urban Ladder is, of course, a different company. But I think the founders who use that understand that something is really basic and you need to incentivize. But outside of that, if there is at least an understanding of that there is a, a particular level that the buyer has reached in terms of understanding of a platform or a seller, you should generally avoid it, right? Because that requires a lot of money to flow in through someone. Now, kickstarting something, e-commerce would have never started if uh, Flipkart or Amazon didn't offer those discounts, right? You wouldn't have had. But the moment those points at the cost of someone's capital have been reached, I think you should absolutely go and do it the right way. And today we believe that given the last year of whatever has happened, there is a point and a seminal point in the ONDC uh, network where you need very good solutions, right? You need someone to take care of, you know, great logistic service. Otherwise, if I buy something there and, you know, it's not serviced properly, then I'm not going to get a great experience. Then I won't come back. So I think it has gone beyond that today. As long as I'm getting the product I want, getting the service I want, able to understand whom to buy from, those basic uh, one-on-one buyer experiences, and the same for the seller, right? For me to put there, manage inventory, get, you know, right visibility. If I'm able to do all of that, people will come across different categories, not just food and grocery, which are here and now, which is how things usually start. But you can do it across fashion, and, and now the innovation layer has to be built, right? Whether that's voice, whether that's, you know, digitizing a bunch of products in a store, a lot of those, those innovations will come. I do believe that there is a huge potential for it to take off without having to do all of what e-commerce had to do when it started. Mr. Nilkini, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think, I mean, I think the, the, one of the reasons for the rapid takeoff is the behavior change already happened. Right? You're already used to buying online or ordering an auto or a car and all. So you can just transfer that behavior change onto, onto these platforms. So in some sense, this is a second generation, second generation way of you know, making e-commerce happen. Uh, you know, we've got lots of founders here, as uh, both Rajiv and Nathan were uh, talking about. If you had to give them, you know, uh, what advice would you give them to build on ONDC? What, what should they take away, really? Well, first of all, I think genuinely innovative ideas which make a difference to customers. I mean, ultimately, it's about creating value. But I think, in general, all business is a marathon, not a sprint. It's about playing for the long, long haul and building great companies. So that's what I hope will happen out here. Uh, Nitin, uh, you were telling me earlier about a company, a payments company, right? I mean, which is the switch as you described it. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but I thought that was a great example uh, of, uh, you know, a company which is already... Plotch? Uh, yeah, Plotch. Yeah. Uh, I think Manoj is in the audience somewhere. So, uh, so, as most people in the audience recognize by now, the general framework for ONDC and, and similarly on our, maybe on other applications on Beckon will be you know, there's a seller side, a buyer side, seller app, buyer app, and then infrastructure in between. And um, and what Plotch is, uh, is, is, we believe right now, uh, you know, one of the first movers, leader in this space of 
of creating that those building blocks that uh, those fiction shovels right node management so seller apps buyer apps will need to have nodes um, now the infrastructure is is open source and and it's certainly uh, meant to be that way but large organizations will probably still help be helped by a a party in the middle that helps them understand node infrastructure node to moon node payments and specific things like reconciliations uh, so that's a, that's what plotch is uh, is is doing and the the founding team actually is a great example of a team that has been so some founders here may have been in e-commerce earlier and some may not be uh, some of you may have been mobility some not but i think that's a good example of a team that has built and really understood the e-commerce stack for many years with with craftsvilla and now they you know before we found them they had taken a jump into into the ondc infrastructure they were already building this so we are very proud and uh, and optimistic about them and you've written them a check is what you uh, yes we have it so it's public yes <laughs> okay uh, mr nilkani uh, you know when uh, 10 15 years back uh, people used to say when there was a new thing which uh, came to india we used to say or rather it uh, something was started here uh, we would hear well it's never been done anywhere else in the world i don't think anyone says that now with everything that we've done here with uh, all the digital public infrastructure do you think uh, ondc and the beckon protocol they have uh, i mean use cases outside india they can sort of you know Uh, cross borders and be applied elsewhere as well oh i think so i think uh, in some sense if you look at all the dpis we have built the one which is probably the most portable across the world is is actually beckon and ondc because one it's really a market thing it's you know it doesn't it doesn't require government it can be anybody can pick it up uh, the second thing is that uh, it's uh, it's a it's a felt need everywhere else you know everybody wants to reorganize their resources uh, using this kind of uh, infrastructure and i think uh, i i i believe again i'm sure, i know they'll talk about it in the panel but there is a lot of global interest in in this architecture but just to take a slightly uh, a longer view one statistic i heard i think you also mentioned in your speeches and talks elsewhere is that digital penetrate uh, ecom penetration is only about 4 5% i think you put that up on the slide as well, well. that's a mckinsey statistic yeah so is that uh, do you think uh, the, the ondc will accelerate that in a oh, way yeah yeah see look at it what are the various things right one is mobility is coming they have just launched again i don't if i mention something i'm told that's not public news so i had to keep my mouth shut but anyway they will launch in multiple cities so mobility is happening uh, food is happening in a big way uh, goods are happening uh, hyper local is happening you know where you know paytm is there pin code is there so i think i think you're seeing more and more people willing to bet on this and then of course all the startups that antler supports it's just a matter of time well i think on that uh, a very optimistic uh, uh, note uh, we'll leave it there let's hope that uh you know ondc uh, can do the commerce what upi did to payments i think your words not mine thank you very much mr nilikan appreciate you joining me nitin and rajiv appreciate your time as well thanks very much